Hello, I'm Tom Meissner, Chief Knowledge Officer of Pipeline Knowledge and Development. Recently, I did the opening talk for an API Pipeline Control Room Forum, and I want to share some of the thoughts that I had at that Control Room Forum with you in this short tutorial. This is uh, my view of the future of knowledge, and whenever we talk about knowledge and we talk about skills, they're two different things. Knowledge is sort of knowing something. Skills is being able to use that, and so we really don't, in our industry, spend a lot of time trying to teach knowledge to people so they can have knowledge, right? It's so we can use things and be able to do things. Whenever you're talking about knowledge, I'm going to talk about knowledge first is, you kind of have industry knowledge. You have business knowledge, <coughs> knowing the people, knowing the operations, and that's pretty much generic across the different companies. Then you have company-specific knowledge. What business are we in? Where do our pipelines run? Who are our people? What are our operations? What type of equipment? So equipment can be generic. Equipment can be specific to an individual company as well. And then our department. What are our processes? What are our procedures? Who are our customers? So if you think about this, this part over here on the left and part of it in the middle is very generic. It's not specific to your company. And then if we get over to the right, there's a whole bunch of unique things that we have here. So one of the questions as we're coming up with our knowledge and our training strategy is, what should I develop myself? What do I have to develop myself? And what can I sort of buy from other people that may be more economic to buy it from other people? So knowledge and skills, we have a different many ways of teaching knowledge. We have instructor-led training. We can have generic by other people or unique by ourselves, uniquely teaching about our systems or whatever it may be. And there are many other methods of teaching. Our objective is actions that add value to our company, to the industry, as it may be. So this is kind of how I conceptualize. And up here on the right, existing and new, some of the knowledge we already know. Most of the knowledge we already know. Some of the knowledge is new. We don't know it yet. We are learning it. One of the reasons that we have put so much focus on abnormal operations, we want to look at what happened under, at, during abnormal operations and figure out why it happened and do things so it doesn't happen again. So some of the things that we learn from abnormal operations about our system or about the processes is stuff we didn't know before. We hadn't looked at it. We hadn't figured it out. And so we need to capture both the existing knowledge and the new knowledge and make that that, take that new knowledge and put it into our existing knowledge and not lose it. For so here, a very quick example of uh, existing knowledge and new knowledge. When I was, uh, the, so I don't want to make this too personal because it reflects back on where I was working. But anyway, it's possible that somebody might be working in an area back in 1984 and uh, detect that there was seismic activity along the pipe and take corrective action. And it's possible over a period of time that, that knowledge about that seismic activity may have disappeared and exactly the same company in exactly the same place might say, whoa, do you know what? We have seismic activity here. We need to do something. Actually happened, we won't tell you who it happened to or which company it happened to or exactly where it happened, but how do we, how do we capture that stuff that we learned before and we don't forget it? Interesting challenge. So we have instructor-led, in person, in the classroom, or distant. I taught a class uh, a couple months ago, actually, to the Iraqi Ministry of Oil in Baghdad. I was in my office in Austin. They were in their office in Baghdad, and we used WebEx. So WebEx is getting a lot better than it used to be on being able to deliver training. So that's the distance. We can have a whole bunch of media ways of delivering training, right? Print, pictures, videos. We can use computers and simulations. And with computing power getting better and better, our ability to build simulators is really going up a lot. Our ability to capture an event that happened, get it out of the historical database, put it into a training script for our people has improved a lot from you know 20 years ago from the old days. And then we have hybrid, a combination of a bunch of things. And that's kind of what I encourage people is. Whenever you don't, don't just get fixed on a certain way of delivering the training, pick and choose the stuff that will work the best for what it is that you're trying to do. 
So most training professionals agree instructor-led, taught by a person who knows the topic and knows how to teach, is the most, I was going to say effective, is the best, is the best at communicating knowledge. It may not be the most effective because it's also the most expensive, costs the most, generally speaking. Simulators are coming to their own, especially for teaching skills. Uh, Kind of an interesting story that just happened this morning, believe it or not. As I was walking in, I got a phone call from a guy. And he said, hey, are you familiar with this, this COBRA thing? I'm like, uh, which COBRA thing? It's like, it's this test that they give people to figure out whether they can be control room operators. Oh, yeah, the COBRA test. I'm familiar with that. Hey, is there any way you could, does your training help me get ready to pass that test? I'm like, well, no, that test is really testing how you think and your ability to sort of think in the systems and all that sort of stuff. He said, well, I took it once. I didn't do very well on it. I want to take it over and do better. I said, you know what? If you took it once and didn't do very well on it, you probably that's probably telling you something. Probably telling you, you don't want to be a control room operator. But they pay a lot. Well, they may pay a lot, but you know, you don't want to go and get fired or something like that. So he said, Okay, well good good point. So he said, I guess then I should go and play a lot of video games and work with four digit numbers. It's like you can do that, but I don't really think that's gonna not gonna help you that much. So just a little story there. So how to use one of the things that, that's occupied my thought is how to use this best way of teaching is structure-led training in a more economic manner. And so that's kind of why I'm doing all these videos. This slide says the rise of the tutorial. So as people have come along and technology has evolved, people are very comfortable using tutorials these days, right? We go and, and look on YouTube and there's all kinds of tutorials about all kinds of things. Some are better than others. There are a lot of advantages to, to tutorials. There are a lot of disadvantages, the three biggest disadvantages tutorial. One is you don't know if the person teaching the tutorial knows their stuff or not. Might be right, might be wrong. Two is that uh, there's no way to ask questions and get feedback. And three is there's no way to validate whether the person taking the tutorial actually learned and can apply what the tutorial say. There might be a fourth one because some of the things that are shot on an iPhone out there are like pretty bad and they didn't do a very good job in post-production. The question then is, how do we provide the interaction, answer questions, validate the learning, and target company department specific knowledge? We look at this, we have the industry knowledge, the company knowledge, the department knowledge. This is the same slide as you saw before. On the bottom, we're trying to get this stuff into the company learning management system. So how do we take this generic stuff, put it into the knowledge management system, the unique stuff, put it into the knowledge management system so it's usable. So the company can acquire generic knowledge, but they have to develop their own individual unique knowledge about their own individual situation. So we have a knowledge management system. We saw this little thing before, right? We had knowledge and skills existing and new trying to to drive actions. And so we build some sort of a uh, delivery, a knowledge delivery system. We implement it. We do some sort of validation we get actions that add value, we develop new knowledge, and then we come back to the repository and add stuff into it. This is, if you're familiar with the quality movement, plan, do, check, acts. That's kind of what we're doing here as we're going along. So in trying to come up with a more economic approach, what I came to realize was that operating pipeline companies basically have all the knowledge that I put into my System. You have subject matter experts that know as much as is captured here, particularly around, around the unique knowledge. But subject matter experts are usually some of the most valuable people in the company, so you don't want to be taking them and building good training material. It takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money. So the question is, how do you effectively use the SMEs, the subject matter experts that you have in your knowledge management? They need to develop the unique knowledge because nobody else has the unique knowledge. But on the generic knowledge, they can have a role. They don't need to develop the generic knowledge around equipment, components, hydraulics, stuff like that. You can use videos and they can provide quality control. They can interpret for the people and answer questions. They can be in the room when the training is going on and they can explain how it works for company specific situations. So the SMEs are valuable resources. They already have full-time jobs. How do we use them the best. To me, where I see sort of knowledge and skill transfer going is that 
You acquire a system and then you populate. You deliver the training, you do some sort of assessment, some sort of validation, and then you have measurements to use to continually improve the performance as you're going on. So this is just a little summary. I'll let you, you guys read through it and see what you think as you have time. And that, that's kind of the wrap up of, of where I think things are going as we're, as we're moving along here. Very interested to have questions, thoughts, discussion, helpful, not helpful, whatever you, whatever you think. I hope you enjoyed that short tutorial. Please subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I put up other tutorials. And do feel free to contact me in the meantime, Tom at PipelineKnowledge.com. Always interested to hear your thoughts and ideas for future tutorials.